Hi there. This is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and very happy to be here tonight. I just got off the uh, radio show with Anthony Sanchez on his Scepter Radio Network. So it, it's going from one radio show to, to the next. Uh, <laughs> kind of fun. And I've got Mike Harris as my guest tonight, and I'm going to be very, very happy to get an update from him. Mike is a radio talk show host, as many people will know. Right now, he has a talk show over on on Rents, uh, and he does uh, the afternoon from 1 to 3. If, if you go to the Project Camelot front page, you'll see there's a, a link there to his bio and and the bio is actually on it's on rents and so you have to just scroll down to the show hosts and and you'll find it but uh he is he's a very interesting guy he he has a background he ran for governor of arizona as a republican candidate if i remember correctly and he they tried to kill him basically and when he wouldn't play ball their way which is what they do to all candidates behind the scene. He, he wouldn't. He was wouldn't be bought off, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then they wanted to kill him. They want to get rid of him. So they they got his. Um, they also made sure that he he lost. Uh, well, he lost in court against his. I guess he was getting divorced at the time, and uh, and I think he's been virtually. I, I don't know how much of this I'm supposed to say. So I actually know a bit more about him uh because we're friends offline but anyway mike are you there hi Gary, i'm here and by the way um I, I had already been divorced when i ran for governor but um the dark forces in, in that election um people who worked for uh carl rove a guy named nathan sprawl uh went out and contacted my ex-wife and uh provide her with unlimited free legal services so she was taking me to court every about every six to ten days uh during the course of the election going on and you know i had never been sued before in my life and i had seven lawsuits filed against me while i was running all because I, i wouldn't sit down and shut up and uh play the game their way just incredible it you know just listening to you talk about it it's just uh it's really an insider's look uh behind the scene uh what happens to candidates and i i think that you learned um sort of you had your your what they say the school of hard knocks right i'm no. telling you it, there, there there's nothing like it i mean no one can describe to you what it's like to run for a major statewide political office like the governor is i mean uh you you can't describe it it's you know, people tell you, you don't know what it's like to have a bomb go off next to you until one does. No one can understand the the stress and uh, uh, just the pressure that you have to endure 24-7. It's nonstop. It, it's, you know, you're, you're out the door at 6 o'clock in the morning. You don't get home till 11 or 12 o'clock at night. You do, you know, three to six speaking engagements a day, every day. And then you have to manage your life and everything else with it. It, it truly is a, a strenuous task. Right, and then on top of it, you were you were being sued because they they made that possible. Yeah, they, they, they yeah they, they were they were they were digging up claims. They, it doesn't matter if the claim is legitimate or not. You have to defend it because if you don't defend it, um, you lose by default. And so every time you have to hire an attorney, it, it's just fifteen twenty thousand dollars in retainer. And after they file six or seven lawsuits against you, that adds up real quick. And uh, it's it's what they call lawfare. And they, they, they do this to, to break your bank, uh, and, and that's it had that effect on me. It really uh, it really stripped me of a great deal of assets, and it just you know tumultuous. It was just a, a tumultuous thing. How how much pressure they can legally bring on you, and then there was the break-ins to the office. They put spyware on my computer. They put infiltrators in my campaign. Uh, like you said, there was an attempt on my life. They tried to run me down while I was walking the dog. Uh, like a pickup truck drove up on the sidewalk and tried to run us over after we were out of the street. It's just uh, they they do their best to get into your head and to you know, make you want to quit. But uh, some of us are just too stupid to quit, and uh, that's me. <laughs> well, I, you know, it, it, it's great that you stuck uh, stuck to to your guns and uh, that you came came forward and you became a a talk show host, and you've also written articles for Veterans Today and. And, and you used to have a show on uh, Republic Broadcasting, and now you have a show on Rents. And your, your show is actually from 1 to 3, is that right? Yes, 1 to 3 p.m. Pacific time, which would be 4 to 6 uh, Eastern. Okay. 
and and so uh, I encourage people to listen to your to your show. Uh, you know what's interesting? Are you on your cell phone right now? No, I'm not. I'm on Skype right now, and we're getting a little chop, a little breakup in it. Uh, this happens every time you and I get on. I don't know why, but it does. I've, it I've looking at. The, uh, you know, I, and I I've, I've, got, I've got a great signal. If we have to do this call uh, using the cell phone, we can do that. Whatever it is, so that the listeners get good quality sound. That's what really is important: is that that the people can hear the message, because there's a lot going on in the world, and you know we owe it to the people out there. If we have insight and we have knowledge, we owe it to share it. Well, thank you, and uh, and and we'll sort of play it by ear here. I'm going to go into the chat. We have a chat room that is associated with the with the show. For those of you who don't know, go to the front page of Camelot near the radio show icon, and you'll see live chat. And just uh, you know, put in your name there, and uh, and and you. That's all you need. It's just your name, and you can log into the chat and and join it. Um, but I, I hope that people can hear it. It is fascinating, and, and people should realize that if we have this much trouble every time we try to talk on the air together, um, there's got to be a good reason for it. And and so they're always tipping their hand. You know, when they're paranoid over something, they they really let you know, and uh, and they interfere. And all it does is is really show their their hand and show show them for who they are and what, and where they're coming from. So. Um, as this this continues, uh, that's that's what's going to be become evident to people. Um, I don't know why they're so afraid of us talking. You talk on the radio every day, don't you? Well, I, I do, and usually it goes pretty well. Uh, you know, occasionally we have some some glitches and stuff, but without fail, Carrie, every time you and I are on, without fail, uh, we we get interfered with. So uh, yeah. some somehow they must perceive us as as being threatening to their to their vision or their plan. But uh, but that's the good news for us, I guess. Absolutely. Well, you've also been on press TV a number of times now. Uh, I guess you've become something of I don't know if you would call yourself a regular. Uh, and and there was a very controversial uh, press TV X uh, sort of I, I don't know what you call it show in which you were well you were one of the guests on the show and some of the things you said really were over the top and I think I do think that some of them were misunderstood I I have to say that um, the fault is probably in both camps but ultimately um, you had something like didn't you tell me was like eighty million views or something. Well, in the first three days, there was 86 million views on that show. Uh, Gordon Duff, who is the senior editor for Veterans Today, wrote a supporting article and quoted me out of it. Uh, that article got over a billion reads. It was the number one story of the year uh, in 2012. And uh, that he wrote that story, I, I think December 18th is on Veterans Today. Incredible. And what you said was uh, was that the Israelis were involved in Sandy Hook, right? Well, yes, that's what I said. And, you know, uh, I didn't disclose everything I knew at the time because I was waiting for confirmation. But we have, and, and these people don't know where Sandy Hook is. Uh, Sandy Hook is near Groton, Connecticut. And Groton is where the U.S. has their nuclear submarine, uh, sort of their, 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 their headquarters is there. So any nuclear subs that come and go are out of Groton. Well, this, the, uh, the Russia has their highest power, best, you know, best in class optical uh, surveillance satellite right over Groton, Connecticut. And Sandy Hook happens to be within that field of view. And the, the Russians have captured images of three shooters entering the school. They've captured images of the gunfire. They, they, they have the flashes. And they also have um, other reporting that, that tells us that the Sandy Hook story uh, is fabrication. And no one believes the lone gunman story anymore. And then there's been some photo ID, uh, photo recognition stuff done. And it turns out that uh, at least one, if not two, of the shooters have been identified as being Israeli Mossad operatives. So that's, that is what it is, and that's where my statements came from. Yeah, and, and that people have to realize that, you know, you weren't just talking off the top of your head. Because um, I know well, you've got uh, people let, are attacking. Let's realize something here, too. I'm really angry that a country like Israel thinks they can bring death squads into the United States and kill children. 
And if you go back and you look at Lenin and Trotsky and all of the early Bolsheviks who believed in using terror to subjugate a, a civilian population, that's what they did. And they're doing the same thing here in my country. And that really, really upsets me. And I'm very, very angry about it. And I will not forget this because we know who the perpetrators are. We just have to go track them down. And there's been a development as of yesterday that you, you may or may not know of yet. It, it's important for people to also realize that the young boy that has been accused of, of doing all of this and then I guess they say shot himself was actually killed the day before. And, uh, and, and so that he, he wasn't responsible for the killings. Yeah, he was he was killed. He was killed the day before and transported. Yeah, uh, and so I don't he, know. He was not. Uh, he was not responsible. Him and his mother were both killed the day before in the house. Right. Uh, well, whether or not some kids were were actually taken, uh, I, I guess there's someone in the in the chat room who's who kind of says that they found two of the kids. I, I'm not sure that that means that uh, they found all of the kids. Uh, and and I, I think perhaps that is is also uh, uh, disinfo to, to tell you the truth. I think if you if you go there, you're going to find out there there were children killed. Uh, but which ki- which kids? I don't know. Do you you may have heard of of what I wanted to say was they're saying that there was a posting a memorial posting prior to the event for the death of the children that was discovered on the internet. Have you heard that that rumor and all that stuff? Hi, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot, Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Mike Harris. And this time, I think we got him on a phone so that we can understand him better. Mike, are you there? Yes, Carrie, I am, and hope this will improve the audio quality for your listeners. And it, I, I know it must be frustrating for them to try to listen to uh, some of the garbled stuff that comes through, but that's what they throw at us. I mean, and Carrie, I don't know, uh, we, we're just charmed somehow that this happens every time you and I are on together. Yeah, well, you know, what they, they're afraid that we're going to jump to some interesting uh, topics and reveal some things that they don't want out there, because um, both of us have sort of very interesting sources, wouldn't you say? Yes, I would. And let me give you what the latest is. Um, they have, uh, I got this from, from Duff yesterday, you know, as, as you know, he and I have friends who are both currently and formerly with uh, the FBI at very, very senior levels, and they have uh, busted a um, two dual Israeli citizens in a Greenwich Village uh, apartment, a million-dollar-plus apartment in Greenwich Village, uh, that was acting as the safe house for the shooters for the Sandy Hook issue. Now, they've got two people in custody, a man and a woman, from what I understand. Uh, they're both IDF-trained. Uh, they've served in the IDF. They're living in the U.S., as I said, as dual Israeli citizens, and they found explosives, uh, not C4, but the Simtex variety, and they found a large capacity uh, magazines for 9mm handguns and uh, a number of other uh, accoutrements which would have been used by the shooters, but they did not find any weapons there, and they're not sure if these two were actually involved in the shootings or if they were merely acting as uh, coordinators and log- uh, logistical support for the shooters. But they, they have busted a safe house in, uh, in Greenwich Village. And uh, this is a direct result of uh, deeper work that's been going on uh, trying to solve the Sandy Hook uh, massacre issue. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I'm sorry. You know, I, I'm skeptical of everything at this point. Uh, they could as, easily... as, as everyone should be. Nothing is ever what it appears. And we can't believe a word that comes out of... Uh, um, any government sources these days. I, I, re- I regret to say it, but we cannot. Yeah. So I mean, they could they could have set up this thing. They they may be for they may even have a motivation to pin this on Israel. Uh, even your Russian intel, satellite intel, uh, could be could be faked. Could be uh, you know created to to draw fire away from the Americans uh, who normally end up uh, being the terrorists themselves. Um, it, it's just a, always a problem. Uh, we are just getting so many different kinds of stories. And and uh, I, I think investigation is, is really important. I have to say that, in my view, at this time, um, remote viewing is one of the best ways 
to determine what's really going on in a crime scene because uh, evidence can be manufactured. And, uh, I, you know, the Internet people are, are all ablaze over this, the fact that there was a, I don't know if you heard this, a tribute web- website set up prior to the shooting that featured all the same photos of the kids that were killed. Uh, yes, and I, 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 I've heard that. I've heard a couple of other uh, things that allegedly occurred in, in advance of, of the shooting itself. But, you know, I, I look at these patterns, and you look at the, uh, the Aurora... Uh, Batman shooting uh, that that happened. Uh, that was allegedly a lone gunman. There's too many pieces that don't fit on that. There's the Sikh Temple shooting. Things don't fit on that. Uh, there's right. this guy Hassan who did the Fort Hood shooting. You know, are, are you aware that he he sat on uh, Bush's Homeland Security Council and uh, was was everything uh, you know neocon uh, by him and that uh, he went crazy and, and did that shooting. They hung that on him. The JT Reddy murder. There were Two cars seen leaving the scene, but uh, they, they try to you know paint that as a murder suicide. You know the Gabby Gifford shooting was uh, yesterday was the two year anniversary of that, and uh, there, there's just so much going on that one thing you can count on is that when they say it's a lone gunman, a lone nut, it's not. It, it, right. it, it's not. It's it, it, it's it's very obvious to me just from the overall trends and patterns that there are death squads operating in. United States of America right now, and uh, our government and our government's been in shambles since uh, you know Bush stole the presidency in 2000. You know, and I, I, you know, we look at me. I've been a lifelong Republican, but you know, you don't steal the election just because you want to hold power. I'm sorry, that's that unethical. It offends me. And, and and George W. Bush was probably one of the most treasonous SOBs ever come down the pike. Him and Cheney both need to answer for their misdeeds. And, you know, if, if things are going to get, you know, sporty in this country, so to speak, if, if we are going to uh, have to engage the, the emerging police state here, you know, those people are going to have some, some trouble uh, because there's a lot more of us than there are of them. Absolutely. Uh, and, well, it's radio shows like this that will help wake people up. I, I just, we, we could get, I, it'd be great if we could get more people to, to pay attention and, and to examine things critically. Uh, you know, I was just on Anthony Sanchez's radio show, and we were talking about this young man who, uh, he, he had a telescope and, and a cell phone, and he photographed a, a very anomalous object, uh, which he thought was being uh, blown up over Sacramento. Uh, in my opinion, now that I've looked at the footage, I don't think it was blown up at all. I, I actually think it was a craft with smaller craft uh, exiting. And uh, he was then persuaded by some news host or whatever to be convinced to say this was a weather balloon that he 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 shot. Um, I put the link in your chat. I don't know if you've got yeah, a I, chance. I, I saw it, and I saw that a couple of days ago when the story first came out. And uh, I don't know what to make of that. That's, uh, that's a very mysterious uh, type of uh, footage there, and I, I really, you know, I can't do an analysis on it. I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't have the uh, the right skills for that. I appreciate that, but but what I the point I'm I'm trying to make here is is how they. They basically tried to railroad him into believing that it's it's a weather balloon. I mean, just like back in Roswell days, and it's it's so far from being a weather balloon that it's it's laughable again. And I, you know, it just boggles the mind what they think that the American people will swallow. They just believe they can tell them anything, and they'll get away with it. Well, let me and, let me let me make two points because you, you've said some very interesting things there. One of them is is about people waking up. And one thing that people have to realize is when you wake up, it's frightening. Because once you realize what's really going on around you, once you begin to suspect that things aren't as they're advertised to be, it, it's very frightening and very unsettling. So people who do wake up, sometimes it, it can be a very uncomfortable situation. I understand why people want to drink beer and watch football. I get it. Because it, it, is, it is unsettling. And, and, but it's, it's one of those kind of things that once you are, are awake and aware, um, you never see the world the same again. And you know this, and anybody who is listening who's woken up knows this as well. Uh, the other thing is, you know, your other comment, why are they still trying to peddle the same old, you know, bunk?
debunk stories that, that they've been telling for a long time. I mean, they're still trying to sell weather balloons as, as, as unidentified objects in the sky. They're still, still trying to tell us it's lone gunmen, lone nuts, when it's death squads. And they're, they're, they don't know how to react because we, people like you and I, American Freedom Radio, Rents Network, uh, Veterans Today, we are the new media. The old media has lost all credibility. And you, you have to look at six companies um, which are owned by defense contractors, control all of the 96% of the media in this country. So you, you have to look at how controlled the media is, and they're, they're trying to make it look legitimate, but it really, it's, it's nothing more than, than, than bare-faced propaganda. Absolutely. Uh, very, very interesting. It, it, it's, it's, you know, it's so funny how um, disinfo makes the rounds, I have to say. And I've noticed it. Uh, it happens with Camelot. I'm sure it happens with you. Um, pretty soon, you hear people out on the, you know, out in sort of the grapevine. It makes it way its way back to you. And people have been lying through their teeth about you. Um, and it and it gets picked up and it gets repeated. And it's just amazing the lies that get out there and and have a life of their own, so to speak. And of course. Uh, the people that start these these rumors of the lies are um, are heavily at fault, and yet, uh, you know, that's what that's what they're doing. And then, of course, there are agents, uh, intelligence agents, that are paid to do that and to sort of stir it up and make sure that people are enemies and all of that. Um, I just think that it's really important one that people do their own homework, and two that they uh, that they question everything that they don't just swallow a piece of information because somebody tells it to them or they read it somewhere where it's been repeated, you know, 50 times on Facebook or even in a news article. Um, a lot of people just don't do their homework. They don't check sources. They don't check. Uh, they don't double ch- check. They don't uh, triangulate information. They just go off the top of their heads. And I, I got to say, there are I've, every day somebody comes to me with a new uh, rumor about Camelot that's a complete falsehood. <laughs> and all I can do is is just, you know, after a while, you just have to sort of laugh and, and just walk away. Well, well, Carrie, the, you know, you deal in this every day. I deal in this every day. And the greatest challenge that I have is discerning what is legitimate and what is false. And... Um, you know, you and I are, are, are experts at this, and it's really hard to detect. Sometimes these people out there who are spreading, you know, the disinformation are very good, and they're very effective. And, um, you know, it, it, it's hard to discern what's real and what's disinfo. It, it's really a tough job. Um, and, like I said, I, I get suckered. You know, I, I'll, I'll admit it you know, freely. I, I'm, I'm not right about everything, but when I find out I'm not, I get really upset with uh, with the sources who who give me you know uh, disinformation or falsehood. I really get upset with it, but it's uh, it, it does it happens, and it, it's just one of those things. It's part of uh, examining everything um, because it's it's hard to tell the truth from the lies sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which means do your homework. You know, do your research because if you if you do take the time to do investigation on the net. You can find all the sides to question normally, and if you actually go to the source, if you, for example, people can go out there and, and lie about Camelot, but if they spent time on Camelot, then they, they can start to, to really see what's true and what's not. And uh, what's interesting is also listening. Um, you know, people don't like to listen anymore. I, I find that they, they have a short attention span. They, they really don't read very carefully. So this is also how rumors get started uh, and disinfo. And um, it, it, it's, it's a fascinating process. And we're in a time when the truth is more important than ever. And having, a, uh, having the equipment, you know, uh, in terms of discernment is, is absolutely paramount and will really make the difference between whether or not you end up on the light or the dark side. And uh, and which side you end up supporting, and you may not even realize who you're really supporting, and and this is part of the problem. Um, 
I wanted to, to ask you, you know, in terms of some of the other intel out there right now, what you are hearing about the economic situation. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of rumblings about possible martial law here in the United States in the next year. I'm hearing uh, all kinds of stuff about government officials and this and that. I have to say that the way I'm looking at 2013, it's kind of like 2012 on steroids so far. <laughs> It just, you know, yeah. just everything well, that we already had last year is just being repeated, only it's amped up a few notches. No, I, I, I agree. And here, here's the thing. Boy, we're, we're in, a, in a situation in, in our country where we could, there, there's a couple of three or four different scenarios that could happen. One of them is, is that the police state comes out and you know, the American people do nothing and we sacrifice our freedoms and we become the USSA, you know, the United Soviet States of America. That, that, that could happen. Uh, other scenarios are is that, you know, we've got a criminal cabal um, that, and, and, and please believe me, this, this criminal cabal is not monolithic. There's different factions in it. There's different groups in it. They compete with each other. They, they, they betray each other. They screw each other over. But they're 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 all unified in that they're all criminals. They, they blackmail each other. They do extortion, all this stuff. Um, they're, they're out there and, and and they're working and and their end game here is to win this thing and to take this entire country over. Uh, that that's that's one of my fears. You and you look at uh, this noise about gun control and you know, the the Sandy Hook uh, the Aurora shootings. All of these were psyops in order to get people to say, "Oh, well, guns are bad." You know, a gun is an an inanimate object. You know, I mean, somebody can beat you to death with a baseball bat. Are they going to make baseball bats illegal? You know, it's uh, it's it's you know. Well, I also you know the Chinese uh, killing that happened to a number of children with it was a stabbing situation. Uh, you know, the, the, the article of choice was, was a knife. Uh, mm -hmm. You need to uh, then outlaw knives. Uh, okay, we're going to be right back after this break. Thank you. Okay. Do you? This is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Mike Harris and uh, getting into all sorts of areas here. Mike, I just wanted to circle back to the Sandy Hook uh, situation one more time because I think some people are getting lost in the forests for the trees, as they say. Um, the bottom line here is that what we've got, and I've written an article about it for those that are interested on, on my blog, but uh, it is the idea that they're building towards something, uh, that these are black magicians, that they have an agenda in mind, that the uh, the Aurora, there's a very direct connection between Aurora and Sandy Hook, um, et cetera. And, uh, and uh, so I, I really would appreciate if, uh, if people started to, to think about the objective rather than to go down the line of saying, you know, that sort of getting lost in the details, if you will. Mm-hmm. Well, you know that that's there. You know, I my greatest fear is another uh, iconic false flag, something of, of major proportions. And you know, I I don't know what that might be. Um, you know, there there's been chatter uh, that it might be a nuclear event of some type, whether it's a thermal nuclear device or whether it's a dirty bomb. I don't know. But really what, what I fear personally more than a nuclear device, because th that's relatively limited in its scope and its trans, uh, trans, uh, transmittability, what I fear even more would be some sort of a biological hazard. If something, a uh, biological agent of some sort was released in a major metropolitan area, that's what really frightens me. And you, you have to remember, as you stated, these are dark mag magicians. These are the guys who, they feed off of your fear, they feed off of terror, they want you as frightened as possible so that you don't use your higher mind, you're not in touch with your spiritual self, and they, they want to disconnect you from source. And so they, they, they want you as terrorized as possible. And so I, I suspect something, and, and anything that I, I would say would, would be pure speculation on that, because I don't know what they have in mind, but my intuition tells me that something may be coming, and I, I think that if we all 
um, really think positive thoughts and, and, and try to meditate, uh, that's the only defense that we have against this, and to remain true to what source is, and to remain true to ourselves and not allow ourselves to become uh, frightened and uh, did not uh, become subject to, to their uh, attempt at terrorism, but become angry instead and, um, and really you know, bring these people to task because anyone who will shoot uh, you know, five-year-old, six-year-old children like that, is, th- th- this is no longer human uh, behavior. This is something else. This is definitely true. Uh... Well, you know, in, in terms of, though, there is a trajectory here, and I, I think it's important to, to realize the connection with the Batman movie. Uh, a lot of people realize that I, I've written quite a few articles on this in, on my site, and uh, I've also been working with a remote viewer who is quite good. And, uh, and, and there are uh, synchronicities between Aurora and uh, Sandy Hook. Both appeared on the map in uh, Gotham City. Uh, in the Batman movie, and both of them have been targets for these kinds of uh, what appear to be Manchurian candidate killings, whereas the Manchurian candidate themselves, which apparently are kids of two guys, both of whom are involved in uh, in high high stakes. Uh, one was supposed to be uh, testifying in the LIBOR scandal, which was the Aurora, the father of the Aurora shooter and the person who was in uh, he works for GE Capital who was the father of of the so-called shooter in the Sandy Hook thing uh, no doubt whatsoever that this man was being pressured also by uh, by having his son uh, targeted in this way and so there's a drama going on behind the scenes that is 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 very substantial and involves finance and it, it all leads, from what I understand, to New York City. And I have been told that they're interested in disappearing financial records because this LIBOR thing has gotten way out of hand. And, uh, and the financial situation is crumbling in a number of ways. And they don't want their, their trail to be discovered. Uh, one of the things that the software Fair Isaac was, was able to do was to profile Financially, the people involved in the LIBOR scandal. So this is where you get the uh, the son of of the guy who created the software, the financial software, being targeted and used as mentoring candidate. Um, the evidence on both cases, by the way, is that both boys, uh, the first one was found unconscious and the other one was supposedly shot himself. Whether he actually did shoot himself or whether he was shot prior to uh, it appears that he was he was shot in advance, but I don't you know I don't know that for sure. I don't know if you know that for sure. Well, but that, that I, I have heard that from what I consider to be a reliable source that uh, the kid and the mom were killed the, the evening before. Then the kid was transported to the school, and uh, that's that's the story that I've got. And like right. I said, I wasn't there. I, I'm not a first hand witness to this. So what you're getting from me is, is hearsay. It would not be admissible in court. But that is what I, I've been told from, from someone who I hold, hold in high esteem. Right. And, and, and so this is, uh, this is one of the ways to, to determine the truth is, is by having intelligence sources behind the scenes that then you can triangulate uh, if you get verification from other unrelated sources. And that's part of the, the process that you have to go well, through. Well, I, I was pleased to hear you confirm the fact that, uh, you know, that the, 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 the son, the, the young man was killed the night before. I was pleased to hear you confirm that. You and I have not discussed this previously. No, no, we hadn't. Uh, but but I, I, th- that's the information I was getting uh, back channel. Um, the information now, I'm getting as well from, from one of my main sources, so who I also invited to be on with us tonight, but he declined. Okay, well, thank you for trying. Uh, I, there's a whole sort of saga that has to do with the shotgun that was used for the killings and an officer that's seen very clearly on video uh, putting his hands all over the gun when they discovered in a trunk of a car, which it could never have gotten to the trunk of the car if the kid shot himself in the head with it, uh, as you can appreciate. So well, um, I saw that video as well. And, and when did police throw proper police procedure out the window? where yeah. this, this officer picks up a gun, 
laughable. He has no latex gloves on. He manhandles it. He, he unloads the, the weapon. Uh, you, this is all on a news camera uh, film. There's copies of it all over the place. You know, that officer ought to be charged for obstruction of justice himself because he broke the law. He interfered in an ongoing but should be criminal investigation. Exactly. And, and it's, it's on camera. It's filmed uh, before the entire world. And yet uh, nothing happens as far as I can tell these people. Uh, it, it's just it's it's really quite amazing what, what's going on in our world at this time. Um, what I wanted to ask you also was whether you're getting any intelligence uh about this, uh, we had we kind of briefly talked about this. There's something in February where there's an incoming object that's been detected uh, that will come quite close to the Earth. I know that Duff wrote an article briefly about it, but there was a lot of controversy as to whether there were even the facts were straight on in the article. Have you heard anything subsequent about that? <laughs> It's funny because uh, you know Duff is one source on that, and the other source who I'm not going to name. Uh, those two are um, are spitting nails at each other because each one thinks that they're right and they think the other one is wrong. But here, here is what I heard now. Now Duff is sources. Uh, he says come out of NASA, uh, and the other source uh, has his own verification, his own methodology. He's uh, happens to be the same guy who managed to hack into both NASA and Google Earth satellites. But allegedly, there's two vehicles of the U.S. space fleet that do not exist. They're big, triangle-shaped, uh, out of Area 51, that are on their way to intercept this to use uh, directed energy weapons, which also do not exist. Uh, and, and, and that's as far as I go on the story. Uh, beyond that, I can't get a straight answer out of either one of these guys. Okay, uh, but that's substantial because I, I think that's more than most anyone else has got. Um, you know, because there we've got a lot of doomer and gloomers out there that that are sort of jumping on the bandwagon that there is an incoming object, and uh, and and this is part of the the, the problem. Uh, I have to say that you know, and I told you this. That's the story you're getting, or or your sources are getting. The other thing is that what I've gotten, which is that there are installations that when I interviewed uh, in Russia, Valerie Uvarov. He talked about uh, there being an uh, installation discovered in China, one in Russia and one apparently in uh, off the coast or somewhere near Florida in the U.S. that apparently uh, were from, uh, you know, maybe even hundreds of thousands of years ago. Uh, ET, yes. ET uh, they contain ET technology, and they're used to aim at incoming objects that would be threatened. Uh, and, and so we'll come right back after the break. Okay, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Mike Harris. Right before the break, we are talking about this incoming object that's been reported by, um, I guess it was discovered something around six months ago by scientists. I think it's in the mainstream news. Uh, but we were yeah, also talking is. about actually, what I was tonight, talking about. Tonight is Wednesday night. Uh, I guess there's a, another object going to fly by. Some uh, some rock called Apophis is supposed to fly by Earth uh, this evening, in fact. It's Wednesday night, right? <laughs> really? Yeah, uh, that, that, that's been in the news. I, I saw that. Uh, that's easy to find on the internet. But that's, that this thing is only you know a, a few um, kilometers wide. It's not a you know, greatly massive object. It still cause a, a big old splash in the ocean if it hit. But that's supposed to be a, a, a near Earth flyby as well. And, you know, Carrie, we, we've had these rumors of, uh, of things coming in. There was the, the Ellen thing coming in. And, uh, boy, I, you know, I'm not on the inside at NASA, but I would sure like to know what they're not telling us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, they appear, I mean, it is true that no matter how you slice it, the underground activity is, uh, is, is booming. You know, so business and building underground bases is booming. Um, more stories coming forward all the time about the bases. Uh, I guess you heard the recent thing uh, about Stephen Kelly coming forward, this recent whistleblower, uh, revealing the base in underneath the Getty in, here in L.A. There, there is a lot of lot of evidence uh, of bases all throughout California, really, and uh, underground, of course, and. And, and more. So uh, we're really talking about uh, a booming business that 
that has to do with uh, what is, in a sense, a breakaway civilization that's building their own cities underground. They're doing that for a reason. Uh, you got to look at that, you know. Well, you're you're right. And if you go back and you look at um, some of these ancient legends, you know, um, from the Hopi people, you know, they they allegedly emerged after the the last great cataclysm from underground. That that that's where they lived. That's where they survived in order to, to get through that great trauma that the Earth endured, you know, back in a previous age. And so they're, they're following a, a tried-and-true template of seeking uh, shelter in, in their underground bases. Well, someone is, not the Hopi, that's for sure. <laughs> well, no, not, not, not now, but that, 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 that's what their legend was. So, but but there, there's yeah. multiple legends uh, around the world of, of uh, you know, ancient peoples who survived by going underground, going subterranean, in order to avoid, uh, you know, a great cataclysm or, or trauma to the earth, and right? They, you know, they're, they're, uh, I look, I look at these legends, and I think there, there's got to be some grain of truth to it. And uh, really, the this current underground building um, boom, if you will, began in World War II uh, in Germany. That, that actually that originated from, and that's where the technology came from that we're still uh, employing today. Well, exactly. The question is, what what are they planning for? You know that that's. <laughs> I'm not on that short list. I wish I knew. <laughs> I, I I realize that, but I, you know, just wondering whether you're hearing any rumblings uh, about anything imminent or anything for 2013. I guess you know about the remote viewers that Courtney Brown uh, study that that was saying that by June of 2013. Um, there was some major event that, that has caused co- coastlines to become uh, inundated with water, et cetera. Yes, I, I've heard that from Courtney Brown. In fact, I was on a, uh, a panel discussion. We had Cliff High call in that night. And uh, right. you know, Cliff, Cliff substantiated that, that, that his, uh, uh, his web bot you know, uh, detects something very similar. And so, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm just... I, I could give you my best speculations, but they would be purely that speculation. Right. But, you know, it is interesting because you are very close to certain intelligence sources, <laughs> and they aren't warning you, right? No, Duff, Duff did tell me he's got a blue ticket. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry? Duff did tell me that he's got a blue ticket. He's got a blue ticket. What does that mean? You you tell me. I don't know what it means, but he he says he's got his ticket and it's blue. So whatever significance that means, I don't know. But uh, I you know I, I you know how when you go to the, the baseball game, they want to sell you a program so you can know who's playing first. I don't have the program. I need one. Yeah, I know. But but the thing is that what is going on there? Because you you have to look at that side of things. Because if you know. Well, it, it depends how what you consider who you consider your friends to be, but well, in the me, end, let me let me give a qualifier here. You know, it's one of those things where you can work in an environment and you can work right next door to people who are doing something that is totally different than what you're doing, and you pick up part of their activities and you don't even realize it does it doesn't register with you, and sometimes you don't know what you see and you don't know what you hear, but you see and hear much more than you realize. And I find myself in that situation where I'll find out months later something that I heard in passing or something that was casually said to me turns out to have greater significance as a function of time. And I, 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 I find myself caught in that very, very often um, when, I, when I have a lot of these, these conversations because, like you said, I, I, I have access, uh, I've gained access to some pretty powerful people who, who know what's going on in this intelligence world. And uh, I, I'm definitely a neophyte at this. Right. And then my question is sometimes when I'm, I'm dealing with some sources is some people think they know, but they don't really. Uh, they may have access. You know, the layers of the onion are many. And, uh, and if you don't have a need to know, they don't tell you. And so some people are operating under misconceptions that they are inside when they're not as inside as they think they are? Yep. Well, that, that's the whole, that's why compartmentalization works, and that's why it is used by so widely. But somebody, someplace, understands what all the compartments do and, and what their purposes are and uh, you know, what, what, their, what their job performance is expected to be. But 
I'm not at that level, and I, I, I you know, I would like to know more. And, sure. And I, well, I, I guess I, we're all in that same boat. We all want to know more. Um, in that, in this circumstances that you're in, though, and you've been sort of doing radio now for a while, and you've been out there for a while. Are you finding that you're getting more people coming to you with uh, sort of what they consider to to be intel now that you're over at rents? Is that is that helping? Y- yes, it is, and I'll tell you, uh, going over to rents, boy, my listenership has just blossomed, and it, it's growing um, exponentially. It, it has, you know, I've been at rents since November first. That was my first day there, and. Uh, the time slot that I'm in, the audience has increased se- over 700 percent, and so uh, I think some of the people who are with me at RBN have followed me over there, and I thank them for that. But uh, you know, we're we're at rents. The format is so much more open. As, as you know, I, I couldn't. I had you on at RBN one time, and I, I got scolded for it. And now I can have you on as much as I want at rents, and I'm, I'm glad to say that because, you know, quite frankly, Carrie, I want my listeners. To sh- I want them to. I want you to share your message with them, because it, it's something that I want everyone to wake up to and, and be aware of. Because there's so much we're not being told. And just let me go on on, on record here with a couple of conclusions that that, that I've come to um, about a, a, the secret U.S. space program. I, I've pretty much confirmed and concluded. This is my own conclusions that we have at least two types of of, uh, spacecraft that are operating. One is that giant triangle shape. That that, that is one of them. It's a big black triangle. It's probably 300 meters on the side. And the other one is a a, a round disc that we have. I'm I'm highly confident of both of those. We've got images. We've done image analysis on both of them. Uh, We've done this through uh, another intelligence agency, a foreign intelligence agency that that did the... uh, to work on that, but I am highly confident that both of those exist, and both of those are part of what is called, you know, the the U.S. space fleet right now. Um, there are some pictures of them that have been captured over Area 51. Uh, the source of those pictures was going to be on my radio show, and about three minutes before he was to go on, he sent me a very panicked uh, email saying that he had just been visited by Men in Black. And he could still go on the radio, but he can't talk about anything. Otherwise, uh, he told me they were going to kill him. And so uh, I, I didn't press him. I said, well, yeah. can, you review, can you review what you've already discussed? He said, yes, he could. And so we, we rehashed old stuff again. But I am, like I said, I am highly confident that uh, the U.S. space fleet has at least the black triangles in it and at least a type of flying disc. Uh, the disc has been recorded at flying at 17,000 miles an hour in a low Earth atmosphere. Um, you know, uh, you know, lower than uh, probably, uh, you know, 3,000, 4,000 feet, you know, uh, about 1,000 meters it was recorded. And we, we've, we've got it. It's real. Done spectrographic analysis on it. Solid object. Uh, you could give you the analysis of what it's made out of. I don't have that readily in front of me right now, but, but the U.S. currently has at least two types of spacecraft that they're operating. Yeah. I, well, I appreciate that. Uh, in, in my opinion, they've got a <laughs> hell of a lot more than that. But I appreciate that you're getting verification, and that's important for people who want nuts and bolts, uh, you know, evidence of, of what's going on out there. Um, it is a fascinating conundrum when you've got a, a planet where a whole part of the society has separated out themselves and are living uh, something like 10,000 years in the future with technology that the other side of the planet just has no access to whatsoever. And, uh, and, and, and so the topsiders, which is maybe what they call us, I don't know, uh, and the people underground, that's, that's really what you've got, two societies living and existing simultaneously alongside each other uh, with, so, in some cases, little or no interaction. You've got people that uh, go to work in the morning and they go to work in a black project and they come home at night and they're they're back in uh, with the topsiders and they're living a double life. And well, it must be a fascinating... Can you, can you imagine the emotional duress that those people live under? Absolutely. Uh, who have to travel back and forth and how they have to compartmentalize the, their own life, their, their own mindset, that when they're on the job, they're on the job, and when they're at home, they're at home. And never the twain shall meet. They can't even tell their wife or their kids or any, anybody about any of this. 
it, it's got to put a tremendous amount of stress on them. And, you know, if any of them are listening out there, call Carrie and, and talk to her. <laughs> call me, uh, you know, and I'll introduce you to Carrie, whatever. But, you know, if, if, you, if you want someone to talk to, either of us are available for you because we, we, we want to get the story out. We don't want to compromise you. We'll protect your identity. But please, if, if, if you need to talk about something, feel free to contact either of us because uh, you know, that's what we're here for. Well, absolutely. And the thing is that that what what we need to do is is bring, uh, you know, is is to own our own sovereignty and and take back our power here on planet Earth. Uh, And and there needs to be a constant dialogue between these two sort of civilizations that barely talk to each other. Um, It's only people like you and I that that form a bridge. And uh, it's that kind of bridge that's going to keep keep our civilization alive. Because we really are one people, in spite of the fact that it appears that we've we've got a a split down the middle, and and one side is living in a completely different manner than the other. Um, the other part of that is that that of course their interaction with off planet uh, visitors, ETs, uh, call them what you will, interdimensionals, etc. And so that's that's also what we're dealing with, um, and. You know, in, 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 in those terms, I, I know that, that I, I have a person who I interviewed recently, I'm not going to name his name, who told me, you know, you mentioned Duff has a ticket. This man told me he has a ticket as well. He has a ticket off planet to Mars. Um, and he's fully aware of what's going on here. He's uh, been targeted to to come out and and speak to people, and he's doing so. But, you know, he's one of many who uh, I I had a Chinese guy, in fact, contact me and offer me a ticket uh, into the Chinese underground bases because he was part of a, I don't know, a software or something company. And uh, he'd been offered a ticket by his boss or two tickets, and he didn't have a wife. And he, he was offering me. I said they... They might notice that I'm not Chinese, <laughs> you know. But you make you would make a great trophy wife for him, I'm sure. <laughs> right. So, so uh, well. Anyway, the the point being is that, and he was a technical guy. He he was offered a ticket. Um, this kind of thing is going on. So, why it's going on? What does it indicate? Uh, this is what people need to know. Um, it means there's some kind of game going on that has kind of uh, it has some limitations to it because you don't need a ticket if everything's fine, right? But that, that, that's right. Well, let me let me give you let me share parts of two conversations I've had with uh, one of them is with a mutual friend of ours, uh, Michael Lindsay, who you know. Yes, um, uh, Michael Lindsay and I were talking today. And the, the topic of discussion came up about how environmental things that everybody encounters and uses every day, although taken um, by themselves, are harmless, but when combined, can be very toxic to people. Uh, we were talking about how this interacts with uh, our food supply, our food uh, chain, uh, things that, uh, you know, uh, household cleaners, pesticides, deodorants, hair dyes, all of these things, how they can be by themselves, stand alone, absolutely harmless. But when can combined with a multitude of these products, that they can have very um, detrimental effects to, to the human body and the human mind. And, you know, what it reminded me of right off the bat was that very first of the modern Batman movies uh, where the Joker uh, introduced a line of beauty products that if you use one of them, you're okay, but if you combine them all, uh, it, it, it destroys you, it, it, and, and that's what that's what it reminded me of. And he and I had that discussion today, which I thought was interesting because you know everything that these guys do, they they telegraph it to us, they they signal it to us somehow, whether it's in a movie or television or something, and and that really jumped off the page at me after having that uh, discussion with Michael Lindsay today. So that that really struck me as odd. And then later in the day, I'm talking to Duff on the phone, and you know, Duff and I talk anywhere from two to six times a day minimum, uh, depending on you know what's going on that day. And you know, he said he was preparing for the zombie apocalypse. So I said, "Well, Gordon, you know, what are you preparing for the zombie apocalypse for?" <laughs> and he said, "Because they're sh- they're shoving it at us so much through the movies all the time." 
And I said, well, you know, come to think of it, you're, you're, you're right. They, they are pushing the, the, this whole zombie concept on us uh, pretty hard and heavy. And so I recommended that he go get the uh, Resident Evil series and watch it all the way through. And if you, if you do that, you watch it, and you, you understand what the end game was by this corporation and, and what, they, yeah. what they were trying to achieve, and they didn't care the cost. Uh, we'll be right back after this break talking to Mike Harris. Thank you. American Freedom Radio. Okay, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Mike Harris. Uh, we were, well, we were just talking about a zombie apocalypse. Uh, I was just thinking, and I, I know it's kind of <laughs> crazy to even talk about, but there are some people who believe that, that you know, and those Resident Evil uh, movies do sort of augment all of this. There, that is a possible future, I'm sure, for, for humanity, but I don't think it's going gonna, it's gonna to well, pan I, I, out I'd quite like that way. Think, I'd like to think not, Terry. I'd like to think like that is just purely Hollywood fantasy. fantasy. But, you know, the, the, the observation that Gordon made was that they're pushing it on us so much. I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's so much emphasis on zombies that, uh, you know, he's looking for a message. There. He's looking for some telltale sign that maybe they're telegraphing. I don't know. I don't know. Well, uh, Whitley Strieber wrote a very interesting book uh, called, I think it's called The Greys, and, uh, and it has a, a very believable, I have to say, uh, mind control scenario in there. And I think that this, that is much more likely uh, what we may have to deal with at some point. And this is where people basically uh, sort of lose it. And Henry Deacon, uh, who came out under his own name, Arthur Neumann, one of our whistleblowers, did say that this was, was actually something that they had been uh, basically warned about in, in the secret government when he worked in Black Projects, that this would be uh, what happens eventually. And I'm noticing, I have to say, it, it's, what it involves is where people in a town begin to uh, to lose it. They begin to completely lose all sense of where they are, who they are, et cetera, et cetera, and, and, and for all intents and purposes, uh, begin to attack uh, s- certain others of the, of the town's people, and for no reason. And what happens is, uh, is that people, their sense of balance because of the energetics coming into the earth, uh, make, because some people are so, uh, so sort of deadened, that they lose it completely. And I have to say, even, I could say, even since twenty the 21st, I'm noticing um, where there's an increase in, in people and disinfo and people misunderstanding each other. And uh, it seems to be reaching uh, what I would say is almost epidemic proportions. So that I don't know if it's being fed or increased, you know, by by electromagnetic weapons or whatever. Uh, certainly, the media feeds into it. But it, it really, people, you can say something. I've I've had this experience lately, where you can say something, you put something in writing, which is very plain, very clear, and the person will absolutely misread it just right off, you know, off the bat. They will hear are you wrong about Diane Feinstein and the Second Amendment. Uh, well, I, so she's I, obviously misread that. You know, she obviously misread the "shall not be in French part. And for, for, forgive my attempt at humor there. I was just taking a dig at uh, <laughs> at Feinstein there. Forgive me, bad no, bad joke. Uh, no problem. I, you know, but sure, misreading uh, uh, the Constitution is probably a common occurrence. But when people can't even communicate with each other, you know. Like I'm talking to you, for example, mm-hmm. and I've seen it happen. Uh, I, I saw it happen um, in a, in certain circumstances recently. It, it's just food food for thought along the lines of of, of what people are hearing. You know, the, the the song that goes, "People will hear what they want to hear and disregard the the rest." Simon and Garfunkel, I think, is the mm-hmm. is this. No, the, the thing that I worry about, and if you remember back ten, twelve years ago, they were doing. Um, uh, direct uh, gene uh, splicing therapy on people who had uh, deficient conditions. It turned out to be a mitigated disaster on the couple that were made public. Well, I, I worry that that gene splicing technology, as far as treatments on humans using viruses as a means to deliver the the genes to be spliced into into that you know, into that person, 
um, I, I worry that those kind of things get out, and that if, if you do have a virus like that, that, that could alter human DNA, and, and it was done on, uh, intentionally to cure a genetic defect in this particular, these particular individuals, I, I just worry that, that, they're, that they're still playing with those things uh, in some deep underground laboratory someplace, and if those things get out, uh, it, it could really be bad for the rest of us if, if you know, uh, we end up having our DNA altered uh, because uh, of, a, of a lab technician or some scientist's error in how they handle their materials, that's all. Yeah, well, it, it absolutely. Of course, chemtrails is, is a per We've talked about the, the, the uh, terraforming of Earth and, and the chemtrails and the, the radiation. Uh, you know, I've got some people in the chat that want to ask you questions, Mike. I, so if you don't mind, I'm going to ask them aloud. Oh, uh, on their behalf. So we've got a person that's asking, what does Mike Harris know about the nuclear scare scam created decades ago by the government and its agencies? Um, Harris, they think you've managed power plants. I'm not sure if that's true. Well, uh, did you uh, actually, I, I was involved in construction of power plants um, at, at one time and actually came up with a way of uh, developing a solar-powered plant that would operate at night. And uh, that was one of the things using uh, GE Frame 7s. Uh, you know, it, it's a long story, but you know, to make the long short story short, is you, know, you, you collect uh, solar energy all day, you put it in the transmission lines, then you take a portion of that and you, you separate the hydrogen from, uh, out of, uh, and oxygen out of water, and then at night you, you burn the, uh, the hydrogen in a GE Frame 7 to, to produce clean power 24 hours a day, even at dark. That, that was a project that I did way, way back when, back when... Uh, Solar energy was still a, a popular and viable concept, but uh, the the whole nuclear scare. I'm scared to death of, of nukes, even uh, nuclear generation, because we don't have any way of getting rid of the waste byproducts. And even if we were to go ahead and approve the Yucca Mountain uh, in Nevada and bury that stuff deep underground, it's still going to have a half life that's going to be you know millions of years. And I, I think that we've all been sold a. Um, so GE could make a profit. I think that the the, the health of the, of the entire human race and everyone on this planet has been jeopardized uh, trying to get uh, to nuclear power, uh, even peaceful power. I, I would recommend that everyone shut those plants down. Don't don't generate any more nuclear waste. I think it's absolutely toxic, and there, yeah. there's you know, it's, it's it's bad for life, and it's something that we don't need. There's other alternatives that are that are viable that need to be released to the public, like zero point energy. And, um, you know, even cold fusion, those things, we know they work, uh, but they're, they're being repressed and uh, they need to be let out, but they won't because it will kill the oil business. Uh, someone wants to know, the same person wants to know, if Galen Windsor, a nuclear physicist. Have you heard of him? I don't know that name. No, thing. I don't. Okay. I assume I'm pronouncing it correct. I think so. Uh, okay, another person wants to know, why do you think almost all of the people who overdose on bath salts, which I, I haven't heard this story, uh, want to eat animals and people? Well, you know, I, I've, I've seen that, and I've seen, oh, probably eight or nine uh, different uh, uh, reports about that. You can go to YouTube, and there's uh, news stories about that. We had a guy here in Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, who got on the roof of his car um, in an in intersection on Scottsdale and Shea, um, stark naked, got on the roof of his car and uh, was running down the street chasing someone, trying to eat them alive. Uh, there was the, that, that guy in Florida who did the same thing, and I don't know what it is with these bath salts, but it's it's something that's really making people go wiggy, and um, e even when the police are there, uh, the one guy was shot like 14 times and was still going at it. Um, it's just, it just beyond me, and I, I don't know, but I do know and I have noticed that those uh, stories are no longer being reported. And so that tells me it's a bigger problem than what it was. Uh, they, the first six, eight, seven of them got out there. Um, they were on the news. People took notice. And now you can't hear a peep about it, even though you can go into any of these, uh, quote, unquote, uh, head shops where they sell bongs and other things purely for recreational use, but they don't um, promote drug use at all. Trust me on that. Uh, but you can buy these bath salts, and that's what these kids are doing. I mean, young, you know, young teenage kids are doing it. And uh, I, I have, I just don't understand what it's about. But the only thing I have noticed is that it's 
out of the news now, and there, there's, a, there's a gag order on any more reports of uh, people acting zombie-like. I see. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, this kind of thing is, is probably um, planted in the, in the population. I think, again, with gun control or with their efforts to take away the guns, you obviously would be extremely defenseless against uh, someone who was, was, was sort of out of their mind. You know? Well, you'd be defenseless against anybody. And, you know, the, the Second Amendment was written. It wasn't written for duck hunting. It was written to protect us from our own government. And, yes. um, you know, our, our government is, is clearly, as Jim Kerwin says, is now the feral government, not the federal government, but feral, because they've gone wild. And, you know, the, the question that I've been asking on my show uh, every day since I had, I had Jim on last Friday, and the question I've been asking is, you know, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you notice a commotion outside and you see that the SWAT team is taking, is kicking down your neighbor's door and they're, they're going to haul him away and uh, confiscate his guns and, and arrest him, his wife, his kids, everything, what do you do as a citizen? You know, what do you do? This is, this is your neighbor. You've lived there for 10, 15, 20 years. You know the guy. You know his kids. You, you know these people well. You know these are not terrorists. You know these are not criminals. His only crime is holding guns after they've passed this legislation. So that's a question that all Americans have to ask themselves. <laughs> what side are they going to be on? They're going to be on the side of, of the SWAT team? Or are they going to be on the side of the people who are, who are legitimate gun owners? And so that, that's something everyone has to ask themselves because I fear that that is a position that many, many people in this country are going to be placed in very, very soon. And so you, you, everyone's going to have that moment of truth where they have to decide what side are they on. Because if they're going to get your neighbor tonight, will they come back for you next week if you happen to own a gun? Uh, very true. I have to say I heard a chilling uh, advertisement today uh, on the radio before the show tonight. Uh, it, it was about they were talking about doing your taxes, and they were saying that they would help you with the health care uh, legislation and my understanding was I thought that this, this mandatory health care thing wasn't going to kick in until, until 2014. Do you know what I what I'm missing here? Uh, why well, would they're, we? They're, they're, they're going to begin accepting taxes, collecting the tax to pay for it this year, uh, effective January 1st. Although they're not going to be administrating any health care until 2014. So what they're doing is they're front-loading cash into the system um, before they actually give the benefits to the people. And, you know, I, I have to tell you, if, if you want proof that our democratic republic has failed, you, know, you need to look no further than this Obamacare thing, because 75% of the people opposed it, um, but yet it was passed anyway. And so, you know, wake up and realize that uh, our republic has failed, and are is in a state of failure, let me say. We can correct this, but um, that that's a, a prime living example. And it's kind of funny because they, they've appointed, you know, uh, what is it, 16,000 new SWAT agents, uh, you know, um, forcible collection agents uh, in the form of SWAT teams, but yet not a single new doctor or nurse to, uh, to help administer a plan that, uh, you know, j just baffles me and, and blows my mind that this is not about health care at all. It's yeah, about, it's exactly. about really the, the implementing the, the the police state under the guise of health care. Exactly. Uh, yeah, very true. Uh, well, it doesn't look like uh, Earth has ascended, uh, although my understanding is the stargates have opened, uh, that humanity now has the choice to uh, to go the road of ascension if they wish, as uh, the, the gates have opened. Um, so... A higher, higher mind and higher knowledge and uh, spirituality is still a, a good option. So, so don't give up hope yet, those listening. Um, but it is, it, it doesn't appear that since December twenty first, we will we entered any kind of um, utopian uh, vision of of tomorrow, at, at least at the present time on planet Earth. Well, you know, let let us talk about that for a second, Gary, because. Um, you know, you, we live in the age of instant gratification, where if uh, you, you can't go to the refrigerator and pull the top off of a beer uh, and have it right now, um, so, you know, so you're, you're, you're not happy. 
Well, you know, if you look back just 100 years ago, if you wanted a beer, a lot of times you had to brew it yourself. Uh, and that means you had to start preparing and planning and working on it, you know, you know, weeks or months in advance of ever ever drinking the first drop. And so if we look at things outside of our current paradigm of instant gratification and look at this merely as the first glimmer um, as, as night you know, uh, yields way today that we're, we're just, you know, as time goes by, we're going to see more and more light as, 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 the, as this, uh, the sun of a new age rises. I, I think that, uh, you know, we just need to be patient and, and wait for it. You know, I, I, I'm certainly glad that we didn't have any great earth changes. I'm glad there were no earthquakes. I'm glad that uh, the sun came up the next morning like it always does. And um, you know, just, just, I, I, just, I just hope that, that people are, are not so... Uh, Conditioned by this, the, the culture we currently live in, that that they were expecting it to happen, uh, you know, like the snap of a finger. You know, I, I really hope that that people have a better perspective and a better time scale uh, than than what our our current society uh, offers us. Sure. Uh, well, I, I think that th- I do think that this time we're in is the kind of time when you're going to look back and you're going to see it a lot clearer than you do when you're right there inside of it um okay we are going to a a break and we'll be right back with mike harris and take a few more of your your phone calls okay this is carrie cassidy project camelot whistleblower radio we're talking to mike harris and uh i do want to say we have a call in line for those that want to call um you're welcome to call 218-339- 8525. We're on American Freedom Radio, and so if you go to the website, you can also get the number there, but I'll repeat it uh, just for people that might want to call in. 218-339-8525. And uh, I was just asking Mike whether or not uh, during the break he knew anything about what was going on in the financial world, uh, if he'd been hearing any rumblings back there. Uh, Mike, you, you wanted to talk about what, what you might have heard there? Well, um, um, Switzerland is um, closing a number of banks. Uh, that, that's one thing I heard just today. And they've had these automated uh, trading programs that Switzerland is also putting the, uh, the kibosh on because uh, they're, they're selling products that, that aren't real. There's going to be some revelations about bonds that have been sold that are illegitimate, that were never authorized bonds. Um, this is on a global scale, and uh, essentially they're, they're fraudulent, and uh, this is all going to be coming to light here in the near term. Uh, and I, I really look for a great deal of financial turmoil in this coming year, and I, I don't know how to advise people. Um, you know, I, I, if I had my choice, if I could put my money in anything right now, I would buy a ranch somewhere up in the Pacific Northwest with cattle on it. Uh, so that our, our other livestock, so I would have a place to live and at least have access to food. Because I, 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 if this financial thing bursts, you now I have to qualify this because you, you, everyone's heard about derivatives, and no one really understands what derivatives are. Uh, but it, it's really sort of a gambling instrument, and the exposure that the banking houses have currently is 1.4 quadrillion dollars, which is 1,400 trillion, or in another word of saying it, it's 10 to the 13th, it's 1.4 times 10 to the 13th, which is a really, really, really big number. It, it's a, probably enough money to buy the, the whole planet of Saturn and its moon. But uh, it, that, that thing, there, there's no way to reconcile this. There's no way to recover this. It, it's much greater than the entire um, you know, uh, gross product of, of the entire planet that we live on. And these guys are playing with funny money, and, and the whole house of cards is about to come down. In fact, I'm surprised that it hasn't come down yet. But uh, at least the Swiss are starting to take some corrective actions by closing some, uh, some, some banks that have been operating on the fringe of uh, legality. And there's going to be some more news about uh, uh, bonds that have been issued that uh, should never have been issued uh, by, by financial institutions. Okay. Uh, Let me see if there's any uh, specific questions here in the chat. Uh, And I guess we, I'm looking at the caller area to see if we get a caller, but we don't have one yet. Uh, 
trying to see if there's any questions in here well, that I haven't the, asked. The good news is, Carrie, that if anybody wants to call in, the lines are open, so you get right in with no waiting. <laughs> exactly. Uh, have you? Someone is asking, have you heard uh, Obamacare microchipping everyone? Have you heard about that? I've, I've heard about that, and I know that's been on their agenda for a long time, is to get everyone microchipped. Uh, right now, the workaround is, since everybody, most everybody has a cell phone, they're using that as a surrogate for it, but they want something, they want something in the human body that uh, they can read and uh, take your, your, your heart, your blood pressure, your heart rate, uh, how fast you're respirating. Otherwise, what they want to do is put something in there that when they ask you questions, they can tell if you're lying or telling the truth. <laughs> they can tell if you're agitated or not agitated. Uh, they, you know, they're, they're, you know, they want it all. They, they want complete control over the human species, and that's what's going. And Carrie, yeah. you and I have talked about this privately a number of times. And I'll bring it now, but it, it just appears to me that whatever is motivating this is not of, of human origin. And now I, I don't know what the source is. I don't know if it's interdimensional or extraterrestrial or an artificial intelligence. I don't right. know, but there's something out there that is interfering in human activities and in, in, in human involvement, and that that's the inescapable conclusion that I've come to. I've talked to a number of people about it. I've talked to you. I've talked to Duff. I've talked to Jeff Rents. Uh, my guest tomorrow uh, on my show is going to be guiding uh, Dr. Preston James. He wrote an article in Veterans Today called The Third Force, where he documents um, this intervention uh, in, in human affairs uh, throughout history, and, and he, he documents the channels, how it's been used, and, and who is connected to it. So I'm looking forward to having him on tomorrow, and I'll, I'll suggest that uh, I'll, I'll give him your number and ask him to contact you, uh, because he would be a brilliant guest for your show as well. But, okay, you know, well, thank you. Yeah. I read his article, very interesting. Uh, you know, some of it is, is kind of uh, run of the mill for, for what we, we cover, but I, I appreciate that we've got a guy on Veterans Today talking about this kind of thing. It's, it's crucial. Um, obviously, Def pushes the envelope as far as he can in that regard. It's an interesting dynamic. I, I know that uh, they were talking about Putin. Um, I think it was Putin who was jo supposedly joking around that there were, uh, you know, ETs living among us, and and people made it out to be a big joke, whereas it probably was a serious statement. Um, you know, it, it is fascinating. I mean, I think that I do think, from what I can tell, is we are going to have more and more sort of revelations along the e sort of ET, the UFO side of things. Uh, I noticed the British press is pushing that more and more again uh, lately. And, I, and so I think that somehow this, this sort of uh, the group behind what's really going on is going to start manifesting, showing their, uh, showing their real faces. It's, it was interesting to me during the, you know, obviously when I was at the Great Pyramid and they closed it, on some key dates, including, uh, of, of course, uh, you know, the 21st. Well, you know, uh, Kerry, drink. one thing I've noticed about whatever this is that's interfering in human affairs, it, it, it wants a couple of things. You know, it wants control, it wants power, and it wants to be may, remain completely anonymous. And uh, of, of the other things, it'll give up a little control, it'll give up a little uh, uh, power, but it will not give up its identity. It wants to protect its identity. It wants to uh, prevent us from seeing who and what it may be. That seems to be its prime directive, more important than the other directives of, of, of control and power. Yeah, I think that's an interesting dynamic. Uh, I guess what we're going to find out is, if, is whether or not what you're saying is really true. I'm getting a sense that there's... There's almost, uh, for example, when I was talking about the Great Pyramid and I had a source on the ground there that said, on the night of the 21st, uh, government cars with foreign visitors were escorted into the Great Pyramid. In the dead of night, uh, they were obviously, it's very hard in, in Giza to, to hide everything you do. You can be seen if uh, you have good cameras and so on. And obviously they were, they were seen. So there's a certain... Um, 
blatantness about what's going on on planet Earth right now. Uh, I think the Sandy Hook thing is another part of that. Even the fact that they're trying to put out this this sort of idea that it might be a hoax and, and further confusing the situation so that people are seeing, you know, the, the, uh, the death uh, tributes that came in earlier before the thing ever happened, supposedly. Or are they just manipulating dates on the computer and, and fooling with people's heads? I don't know, but it seems to be getting more and more blatant. So whereas you say secrecy is is all important, I'm not so sure that I th- that we might be at a turning point in just that regard. Well, I, I think we're about to blow the lid off of them, and I think that they've gotten they're getting careless, and I think they're making their move. And so yeah. you know, there, there comes a point in time when you can no longer hide your intention. You have to make your move. I think they're yes. at that tipping point where they're going to make theirs. Right. And, and yeah, their means- true colors are, are coming out. And also, I think another side of that is that people who have been parading as being, you know, working for the light and so on and so forth are, are starting to show their true colors. And I think that we're seeing people switching what I would say is switching sides. That suddenly people that you thought were sort of on the light side are, are really on the dark and, and Our, vice versa. Well, we're working with the dark, yeah. But, you know, Carrie, that, that being said, let, let me say this. I am the eternal optimist. I, <laughs> I, I believe in the human spirit. I believe yes. in the greater good. I believe that the creator and the creation are, are one and the same. I believe every particle in this universe is connected to every other particle in the universe. And this in, universe is intelligent. It is benevolent. And I believe it is teeming with life. Um, you know, like, like you, you can't leave water standing by itself because it'll, something will grow in it. And that's yeah. how I think this entire universe is. And I think that uh, this, this whole thing with the, these dark side and, and these people who have, if they are people, who have these, these short-term shallow agendas for immediate power or immediate control, I, I think that they're to be exposed and, and to be overcome. And, you know, maybe I'm maybe I'm foolish. It's, it's going to be a long, hard road to hoe between here and there. But I, I really think that uh, that you know, good will out. I, I I'm with you on that. Uh, now we've got a bunch of callers, and we're right to the end of the show. Let me see if we can grab one caller before we end. Uh, we got area code four one five. You're on the air with uh, Mike Harris and Carrie Cass. Ah, uh, that's it. Unbelievable. Oh, okay. well, you know, they uh, always wait to the last minute. I, you know, um, I wish they'd call sorry, me sooner Miller. because... Well, Carrie, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. a really good resource to have, and uh, thanks again for inviting me. Okay. Thank you very much, Mike. It's been great having you on the show. I recommend everyone listen to Mike's show, uh, 1 to 3. I believe, is it every day, Mike? It's Monday through Friday, 1, through, uh, one to 3 Pacific time, 4 to 6 Eastern time. Okay. www.rentsradio.com. And thank you all very much for listening. Absolutely. Okay. Have a great night, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.